Hello everybody, thank you for tuning in to another StarCraft 2 broadcast. My name is Anaris, and today we're watching game number one from the Intel Extreme Masters quarterfinals between Startail Squirtle spawning as the Protoss down in the bottom left-hand position against his Zerg opponent, Idra of Evil Geniuses. So we have a Zerg versus Protoss for you today. This is going to be the first game in a best of five series. And just a little introduction for the players. Most of you know who Idra already is. He is the American legend of Team Evil Geniuses. One of the best Zerg players in the world right now. Probably the best in America for 100% sure. And down here we have Startail Squirtle of Team Startail. So he is actually a... He was GSL Code A player for Seasons 1 and 2. And a little known fact about both of these guys. Actually, it's probably pretty well known. They both turn into giant water-related monsters when angered. Squirtle, I did a little bit of research, turns out at level... Let me check. Hold on, let me check my papers and my notebooks. Level 36, he turns into a Blastoise, which is a giant angry turtle with a bunch of machine guns on its back. I'm sure that's going to anger the Pokemon fans, but oh well. And then up here, we have the Kraken. We have a player who was ha has had special powers bestowed upon him by Boxer himself. So I am really looking forward to a great game here today on Zelnaga Caverns. Ironically, a map with no water. Coincidence or otherwise? I don't know. We'll just have to watch and see. Now, we're probably going to expect to see Idra try to go for his traditional macro-oriented style of play. You'll notice he is rather defensive, trying to build up a lot of games until he reaches that point where he is really comfortable and then he just makes some very aggressive plays uh, later on in the game once he's got his bases going and once he just feels comfortable with the game. And meanwhile, Protoss down here. I'm not actually too sure what he's going to be going for. I have not had the honor of watching many games from Squirtle. However, I'm sure they're going to be entertaining here, especially if they have made it both to the quarterfinals here for the Intel Extreme Masters Tournament. Uh, Squirtle has capped both of his geysers. Cybernetics core going down. We are seeing a pretty traditional Protoss wall-off. There's the Cybernetics core and the gateway right at the top of the ramp there with a nice little walkway that can be blocked off by one zealot. Now notice he is not using his Chrono Boost technology right now. Might be saving that for the Warp Gate technology as we could be seeing him going into maybe a 3-gate Robo build or something like that. Maybe 2-gate Robo. I don't think we're going to see that. Although, you know, it kind of depends. I mean, I'm sure he is, uh, I'm sure he's got something in mind here. Let's actually look and see what the players have seen so far. You can see Idra does have a drone getting up-to-date information down in the Protoss base. Meanwhile, the Protoss does not have anything up here. You can see that one probe is just hanging out way over at the third base position, which the Zergling is now going to find. Oh, he's out for blood today, ladies and gentlemen. I think we could see the first blood of the drain game drawn right there. Two more, actually, wow, three more Zerglings now. Now, looking to finish off this probe, and there you go. First kill of the game, ladies and gentlemen, probe in the middle of the map, as Idra is going for a speedling build into an expansion. This is actually a pretty nice build. It's a little bit easier to defend than, say, just dropping off an expansion right off the bat. You do get that speedling upgrade with some, with some Zerglings a little bit earlier. Lets you defend a little bit easier, and also, you can use the Zerglings to come down here and kind of keep the Protoss contained. Use them to kind of, uh, you know, make sure nothing comes out, and it look for an opportunity. Maybe you can sneak them in there, kill a few probes. There's, there's a whole bunch of different things you can do from that position. But we are seeing Squirtle dump a lot of his gas into these sentries. Sentry is actually great for blocking off the ramp in case a bunch of Zerglings decide to run by. They're also great with force fields and dealing with zerglings. You know, combined with zealots, they can be a very powerful combination indeed. And now we have Idra. His expansion is now complete. We can look at the income for both players and see that Idra is clearly shooting ahead, 25 to 26. But look at that income discrepancy because he's only running off of one gas as we speak. And looking at the production tab again, we actually noticed while we were looking at the Zerg player, a Protoss Nexus has gone down at the natural expansion for Squirtle. So he has certainly looked to level up, possibly to become the giant water monster that we know him for, as we are still going to be going on here and just past the six minute mark. Not going to be having a whole lot going on, actually. A Stargate has gone down. He might decide to do a little bit of aerial harassment. No, do note that there is also two, uh, two additional warp gates that have gone down in the meantime as well well. Now, airplay would be very good, especially there's a nice little timing where you can kind of catch Zerg off guard before they can get to Tier 2 and really establish the creep, which you see that time has more or less come and gone. 
If you're going to go for that particular tactic, you pretty much have to go straight up to that Stargate and get it out ASAP. And, you know, it's... It, you know, the effectiveness, it can be it can be helpful, but probably not at this level of play. But uh, we are seeing here that Idra is continuing to work on his economy, throwing down a Roach Warren. Roach is always a safe bet against Protoss, but we'll have to see how many he actually does decide to get. It's probably going to depend on what he sees the unit composition here from Squirtle. He may decide to go more heavy in the Hydras. He may decide to go, you know, more heavy in the Roaches. It all just kind of depends on what the Protoss has, which right now, the Protoss actually has not thrown down an uh, a robotics facility yet, so he does not have an observer up observer rather up there in the Zerg base to see what Idra is doing. Idra, meanwhile, has actually done a pretty good job scouting out his opponent. He ha he is aware of those two additional gateways, and he's also aware of the Nexus. So that's pretty much the most important things here at this point in the game. But there is a Void Ray going to be heading out in the middle of the map right now. Will it get an Overlord kill? I believe it will. It'll actually drop Idra down. Oh, man, is it going to drop him down? Yes, I think it will. Boom, there he goes right there, ladies and gentlemen. Idra, oh, man, look at that timing on that Overlord. Just popped a second ago. Very close indeed. You see, he's now supply blocked, though. Not a good thing. Idra doing a great job spreading his creep around. Oh, almost lost that creep tumor. Just a second too late for that Void Ray, however, as the Zerg player is continuing to knock out the rocks, uh, getting access to his third base. If he's able to spread creep down there, you know, claiming that expansion would not be a bad idea, as long as the Protoss does not try to make an attack. A little bit of Phoenix harassment going to be coming over here from Squirtle, trying to pop off an Overlord, maybe scout out the uh, scout out the Protoss base. Not too much of an opportunity opportunity there for just one Phoenix. However, you'd really want to have them in numbers if you want to do any any type of Overlord harassment. You know the uh, the Queen's very good at defending against those light attacks like that. As we do have two Phoenix actually heading out across the middle of the map, may decide to go into the natural, may even try for a Queen kill. I don't know if that's going to work out so well. No, it looks like he's not, but he is going to lift up the drone and deny the expansion for another few moments, at least, as they do retreat safely back to the Protoss base. Meanwhile, Protoss is looking to maybe move out, maybe try to assert a little map control. No, he is going to bring those units back, because apparently one of the Zealots did get his uh, foot stuck on the tendrils there. Never a good thing, but we do, do have a robotics facility on the way now as well as weapons level 1 for the Protoss player, and meanwhile, up here, Idra, constantly harassed by these uh, these two Phoenix, are, is actually throwing down his third base. Now these rocks are gone, he's able to spread the creep down, get us some aerial defenses down here, I think it'll really have a solid chance of surviving. There is a Void Ray going to be coming over here, pulling the anger of the Kraken, going to be coming over here with two Hydras and two Queens, all that is needed to fend off this small Void Ray harassment. Phoenix are going to be heading back to the base there. As Let's actually take a look at the production tab just for one brief second. There is a robotics bay going down the line. Also, a Zerg ground carapace level 1. This is going to help actually deal with the Zealots giving that one armor upgrade, or the weapons, rather. Going to make it so that way those Zerglings cannot be two-shot once again. And let's actually look at the income now. We can see how it's really actually balanced out just a tiny bit. But when this third expansion is complete, we can really start to see his economy take off away from his opponent. He's already got the queen there, ready to go, going to be injecting some larva. May decide to macro out some drones, still focus on the economy for a little bit. And it looks like he is going to be moving out closer towards the middle of the map, however. May decide to knock off these rocks. Certainly is feeling a little bit more confident now that he does have the Roach Hydra Zergling build. We see he is a little bit heavy on the Hydras right now. And that's really a good thing, considering the unit composition of the forces that we're seeing right here. It's pretty stalker heavy, not a lot in the way of zealots, so not really going to have to tank a whole bunch. Going to probably worry about force fields there, dropping, wants to make sure he does have that range upgrade, which he does. You can see range 6 right now, knocking off those rocks, and Protoss is actually going to be heading back to his base once again here. The Colossus is here, the extended thermal lance upgrade is about 70%. Once he has a couple Colossi, he might decide to go out ahead and actually attack you know, Colossus with the one with the one damage upgrade, very strong units, and Zerg, I, you know, he uh, he's got a pretty good army himself though, so it's really could be anybody's guess at this point. It's all going to come down to the positioning, the force field usage. But I do want to note one key thing that just popped up a moment ago: six corruptors to deal with the Colossi. Now there is one Colossi in this army right now that is moving out, and there's a second one just kind of hanging out right here. Third one is being carded boosted out on the way right now. Thank <laughs> you.
as Protoss is actually looking to maybe go and force an engagement from Idra, who looks like he actually has his forces kind of spread out right now. You see a bunch of Hydras running around the northern part of the map. Meanwhile, Roaches and Zerglings still hanging out at the High Yield Expansion. One Overlord coming over here, seeing if he can scout anything. Unfortunately for him, there's a couple Angry Phoenix that are coming out to play here. And here comes the engagement, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, just kidding. Ha, you like how I got you all worked up there? Ha ha. Ah, uh, joke's on me, because now they're going to fight. Finally, Force Shield has gone down. Look at those Force Fields placed all around, blocking the Hydras off completely. And the Stalkers are continuing to focus down the Roaches and the couple Hydras here, which are just kind of dancing around. The Corruptors have taken out the, the Colossi. Looks like that second Colossus never quite made it to the army there, so it's, I guess it was just one Colossus in the field. Second one has now joined the army, but not before having the Protoss having lost the first one there. That is going to be really painful for the Protoss to try to engage now with only one Colossus. Again, there's plenty of Corruptors to deal with the situation. This time there's no energy for the Force Fields, just a little bit, not enough to do a whole lot of damage there. As the Zerk is continuing to press forward, the second Colossus has gone down, so now the Stalkers are very vulnerable to the Hydras, who are continuing to push down in the Protoss space. Look at this right now, ladies and gentlemen, compare the army size. We see 160 to 116. Idra is definitely looking to move down here and finish this off. He is, you can see, Red is swarming from all corners of the map. Zerglings going in first, going to engage the uh, Zealots and the Stalkers. Meanwhile, Hydra's in pursuit. Corruptor's hanging back just a little bit, looking for any free kills. And now there's one right there, ladies and gentlemen. Colossus coming down super quick as the Corruption ability was used on it. Look at those men. Hydra's continuing to do their thing against the Stalkers. The Protoss army cannot do anything about it. And there's the GG from Squirtle. So this is going to conclude game number one. Let's go on to game number two and see what happens next. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Between Squirtle spawning as the Protoss over in the 3 o'clock position against his Zerg opponent, the Kraken Idra. So we do have a Zerg versus Protoss today on the map Metalopolis. This is game number two from the quarterfinals, the Intel Extreme Masters Tournament. This is the February edition, so... Good stuff is to be had here on this game, as I think you've, if you're at this point in the video, you've already seen game number one, and I can just go ahead and say spoiler, but for those of you who, for whatever reason, have skipped ahead like 10 minutes in this video, uh, spoiler alert, go watch the whole video. All right, so right now Idra is actually up 1-0 from some fantastic play there on Zelnaga Caverns. We saw he really sat there comfortable. Squirtle let him expand and expand again and just com just completely dominated the top half of the map. And with Idra, man, you know, that's exactly where he shines, getting that macro-oriented type of play. You see him playing defensively, defensively for a while and then... Bam! All of a sudden, you've got like 80,000 red dots in your base, and you're just running around going, ah! And so, and that's actually a realistic representation of what happened with Squirtle. So, you heard it here first. Squirtle, uh, screamed like a, uh, Squirtle. They scream? I don't know. I don't know Pokemons that well. I just kind of go on the internet and find random things because that's what I do. So, all right, right now we have the Protoss throwing down his buildings at the top of the ramp here. Again, like last game, very common placement against Zerg. We do know that uh, there's also a probe coming over here. Squirtle trying to scout out Idra, maybe see if he can get any information about what Idra could be doing. He knows that Idra, it's a well-known fact that Idra really, like, well, really likes his macroeconomic style of play likes building up, getting himself situated, and kind of plays defensively. He is he, he has been known to do other strats as well, certainly, but on the large, we do see him kind of sticking with that play style. So right now, he is going with a uh, defensive link build, going to be getting those Zerglings and Extractor right off the bat, probably drop an expansion shortly thereafter, like we saw in game number one. Again, it all comes down to it's a little bit safer than dropping your hatchery at, say, 15 or 14, and then throwing down the pool and and then the extractor. Because when you do that, you do leave yourself open to a little bit more in the ways of early game harassment. So there's the gateway. Going to be bringing out that Zealot. Going to close that gap right there. Cybernetic score has gone down as well. Now do note, there are two assimilators here right off the bat. 
And it's actually before the cybernetics core was complete. There is a drone still kind of hanging out here, so Idris are going to be looking to scout and see exactly what Squirtle is going to be doing. Is he going to be going with that three-gate uh, Stargate build that he did in game number one? Is he going to be going with something else entirely? That's going to remain to be seen here, but that drone is hopefully going to be finding that out. Now, notice that the Protoss player actually does not have a probe over here anymore. So he does not know this expansion has gone down. You actually have the probe just kind of hanging out right here. This is a really good position because it's going to allow the Protoss player to see units that kind of maybe do a wide angle and come running through here. There's also two Zerglings which are going to be heading over here in just a moment or two. See them running around as a Stargate is going to be going down right off the bat. Now this kind of gets back to what I was talking to in game number one about Zerg being a little bit more vulnerable for a certain amount of time between tier one and tier two there when all they have is the Queens and not a lot of creep. But we'll actually have to see how uh, how Idra responds to that and whether the Protoss player decides to maybe throw down some Void Rays or just do some Phoenix harassment. Certainly he is looking to be aggressive with that Stargate here or else he would not have thrown it down quite so early. Drone has been killed by the Stalker, however. Good choice for that. We did see in game number one he chose a Sentry. A little bit easier to do with the Stalker in my opinion, but that's just me. Sentry does it way cooler there, running around shooting his laser beam like the baller that he is. And now we see that Stargate is complete, and a, wow, a Void Ray is being Chrono Boosted out. Now this is something, actually we see this a good bit in the uh, the Champions Trophy Tournament over at SK. Uh, see that uh, see that Void Ray play from Bishu a good bit, actually won him the December Champions Trophy Tournament with that play. So maybe uh, maybe Startail Squirtle looking to do a little bit of a similar build. Maybe he's going to put some more pressure on or maybe he's just going to use it for harassment and continue to try to out-economize. Is that even a word? Uh, Idra. Which can be pretty difficult to do here. Idra, the master of macro, thrown down an evolution chamber and looking to be going into tier 2 as we speak, getting that second extractor. You certainly want to have that additional gas going into tier 2, or else you're really going to be handicapping yourself. You know, you really don't want to throw down that hydralist in and just sit around for 15 hours, not able to build that, as the evolution chamber has now actually gone down. Goodbye, sweet Sally. Good night. Three queens here are in the field, so could be providing a little bit away in the way of aerial defenses. You know that evolution chamber would have given them the option to actually throw down some uh, some e or some spore crawlers, but. He might not be too worried about that. There's some Zerglings going to be coming over here as we do have this act this uh, this Void Ray killed one Overlord just a moment ago. Saw that on the main map there, and is now looking to knock off the Zerglings. Meanwhile, I do want to point out there is a hatchery going down right here, but also Squirtle has a pylon way across the map, so he may be looking to warp in some units here in the near future as his forces are moving out, very gateway oriented. One Void Ray still kind of hanging out, looking for anything he can be doing. Look at this Queen's very low on energy, definitely not going to be able to transfuse each other. So if the Protoss player comes over here with his forces and tries to knock those out, which it looks like he might do exactly that, charging up the Void Ray on the hatchery. Look at that, man. Two, uh, two charges right there. And here comes a Phoenix just kind of running into the Queens. All right, well, that's cool. Whatever works for you, man. You are you are the man, not me. So two Stalkers have been warped in here behind the Queens as the Phoenix is continuing to run around, running in first. Again, they are just super fast units like that. As now Protoss lifting up one of the Queens and forcing the cancellation of that expansion. Both of these Queens will be going down. That is going to be a serious hit for the Zerg player here. As we do go into the mid-game, we see he actually has some decent defenses, but will it be enough to hold off this attack with the Proxy Pylon? I am not entirely sure. Edra moving his Zerglings into position. Good stuff right there. Trying to get a uh, trying to get back here behind the Stalkers and do extra damage, but looks like that's not going to work out for him. There's the GG from Idra. Look at that force field placement right there, man. No reinforcements for you today as a one Hydra was just popping out. He's like, oh my god, what have I got myself into here? Oh well, screw it, it's over. So anyways, that's going to be game. We'll go on to game number three and see what happens next as we are now one in one here in the quarterfinals in the Intel Extreme Masters Tournament.